So Death Stranding has finally launched and porters everywhere are wandering the wilds of the UCA as Sam Porter Bridges. We finished the game and we felt like now would be a good time to share some tips, a few things we wished we knew when we started the game. It's always good to be prepared, right? After all, tomorrow is in your hands. Always carry container repair spray. Seriously. Timefall is a constant threat to the well-being of your deliveries, and you'd be surprised at how fast it eats away at cargo containers. Too much timefall can ruin your deliveries beyond repair, unless you take some time out to check in and do some repairs on the road. Repair spray is cheap to make, doesn't take up loads of space, and can sometimes be found on mules. So there's really no excuse not to have a can on you at all times. All you have to do is wait until the rain stops or find shelter under cover or in a building, put all your damaged boxes on the floor in front of you, and give them a quick spray. You'll be able to see any damage disappear before your eyes. Bear in mind too that later in the game, players can build Timefall shelters that pump out a free dose of container repair spray, and they can play a little bit of music while they do it, so they're worth keeping an eye out for. And if you have some really precious cargo that you don't want to risk, you can get clever and stack a number of other boxes above and in front of the important stuff on your back to keep it safer from the rain, allowing all the other boxes to get damaged instead of the really essential cargo. It's just a shame container repair spray doesn't work on vehicles. You'll have to repair those at either a distro center or a player safe house. One of your absolute best friends for long-standing success in Death Stranding isn't the awkwardly sponsored energy drink or even the weird squishy cryptobiotes. It's the humble floating carrier. It may not be very sexy or exciting to look at, but it makes all the difference in the world when it comes to traversing uneven or awkward terrain like mountains with a lot of cargo. You get access to the blueprints for the floating carrier, a little anti-gravity trolley that you attach to your suit and pull behind you after you visit the weather station, and it means that your back and arms are free to climb and jog more comfortably so your stamina isn't drained as fast and you aren't prone to falling over so much in rocky areas. The trade-off is that you do move a bit slower than normal, but it's definitely worth it as it means your cargo will be safer than it is on your back. Sometimes if you sprint or jump around too much the line will snap, but the cargo will still be protected and all you need to do is run back and reattach the cable. Floating carriers run on chiral crystals, which you can find pretty much everywhere, so as long as you have a decent supply you are always good to go. You can even try attaching more than one carrier together or ride the carrier yourself, which works a little bit like a skateboard. It's mostly just for fun though, as you can't go very far except for downhill and, well, it's pretty dangerous. Of course, as you gain access to bikes and trucks later in the game, you may be tempted to leave the old floating carrier behind, but trust us, it still has its place. Trucks really need roads or wide open spaces to be truly useful, as a lot of Death Stranding's environments simply aren't suited for transports of that size. They'll get stuck on a rock as soon as you set out in many cases, or you'll be forced to abandon it halfway up a mountain. Bikes are better, though they don't give you as good protection from the rain, as you can brute force a motorbike through rough terrain given a certain amount of patience. But honestly, sometimes it's just better to use a carrier and your own two feet. Another reason floating carriers rock is that they leave your back and hands free should you run into a little bit of local resistance. Combat isn't a huge thing in Death Stranding, though as you progress you'll gain the ability to craft a wide range of lethal and non-lethal weapons, the bola gun being our favourite. But in full honesty, when you're spotted or pinged by the mules, that's the human enemies in the game obsessed with delivering stuff, it is best to run away instead of fighting them. They almost always move in numbers and it can be extremely easy to be overwhelmed and downed with their incapacitating weapons if you get surrounded. Plus, there's nothing really to be gained from facing them head on, apart from a few items that chances are you know how to make anyway. But if you run, they give up really easily and you'll still be the proud owner of everything you set out to deliver. Any altercations put your cargo at risk. So really, fighting is best left as an absolute last resort. Unless, of course, you're just really itching to punch someone in the face, which is fair enough, really. 
If you do get spotted, mules are easily distracted by a decoy cargo, so try and keep one of those handy if you know you're going to have to pass through somewhere with a mule presence. That'll be those big orange bubbles on the map. Mules are able to scan for your presence when you're on their turf, but as soon as you see their orange pulse go out, immediately press R1 to ping back with your own and their search should be negated, allowing you to sneak through undisturbed. Mules are one thing though, BTs are quite another. These supernatural enemies, who generally turn up whenever you see time fall, are a little bit more difficult to sneak past than mules, but still not impossible. Your Odor Deck scanner will come alive whenever BTs are nearby and point to the nearest one to you. Stay low, move slowly and hold your breath for short periods of time when you need them. BT locations become clearer if you stay still for a moment, so use this to spot a path through them. Later in the game, you'll get an ability that can perform one-hit kill sneak attacks on BTs, but until that point, these guys are always a threat. It's not an immediate reason to panic if you're spotted though. You can still try to leg it away from their tar bursts, but if you're touched by one, you'll have to shake off a bunch of other tar figures trying to drag you down. Try to get out of the tar as soon as possible and then make a beeline for dry land. In most cases, you can be out of trouble in just a couple of minutes. A combination of jumping, shaking and running to the edge of the tar is preferable because if you fall over, your cargo will be scattered and damaged, BB will be upset and you'll be forced into battle with a huge BT taking the shape of a large, gross animal. Even when this thing turns up though, it's not too late to run. Although there is at least one forced boss encounter during the game that you have to beat, it's pretty much always quicker, easier and more efficient to run away. These giants vanish when you leave the area, which also clears off all the other BTs that were around, meaning you should be able to finish your trip undisturbed. Opting to run also means that you won't need to lug a load of grenades and guns around wherever you go, which to be honest, are often chucked to you by other players' avatars on the battlefield anyway. You're not here to fight, you're here to deliver stuff, so let's talk quickly about the best way to do that. When you take on a contract, you'll be presented with a menu to load Sam up with his precious cargo, and there are more options here than you might first think. The option to carry on back is the first and most immediately obvious choice. This is the main backpack, and it's the default for where cargo you come across in the world goes and the only place where larger cargo fits. But only using this is not only inefficient, it makes you more prone to being imbalanced and thus fall all over the place. Another option is to attach stuff directly to your suit. Sam has four points, shoulders and hips, where small cargo can go, and these points are useful because cargo attached to Sam's suit won't fall off when he falls over. Later on in the game, however, you can attach armor plates to these points instead, so it's worth weighing up at that point what's most important to you. Then there's the utility pouch, used for blood bags. Don't make the mistake of carrying blood bags on your back when there's dedicated space for up to four blood bags on the suit. Make sure you're using them. The tool rack is another special place where the tool or weapon or PCC you have equipped lives. Be aware though that equipping something else will move whatever was on the tool rack onto your back. Then, finally, Sam can carry things by hand. This should really only be used for quests that require it though, otherwise it's much better to go hands-free. Now, if all of this sounds a bit of a pain to micromanage, then we definitely suggest hitting the auto-arrange button before heading out. It's not always perfect, but it's good enough at arranging your cargo optimally that you don't have to sweat over what to put where. It'll make sure your stuff is evenly distributed across all your options, so all you have to focus on is the journey ahead. Something to bear in mind too is that if you have a vehicle and you park it right next to the delivery terminal, then it'll appear as an option for you to off and onload cargo onto too. Same goes for a floating carrier if you have one attached. Death Stranding has a multiplayer component, but like Dark Souls, it's more about helping players in their own individual world than inviting them into your own. You never see anyone directly, but you will occasionally run into weird white tar avatars that might throw you a stack of useful items during a boss fight. Even better than this though is the help that comes from using other players' structures, including safe houses, rainfall shelters, 
generators and zip lines. All of these are useful in their own way and tend to crop up at centres or at the boundaries between chiral network ranges. Safe houses are useful because they allow you to heal, soothe BB, repair your vehicle or even fast travel. But a well-placed zipline network can turn an hour-long slogging journey into a quick five-minute back and forth. So consider adding to a zipline or road network and making things easier for the players coming behind you. If you like or appreciate a particular player's work, Check out the bridge links option in your menu. It's a list of all the other porters you've had interactions with in Death Stranding, and it's where you can form strand contracts, basically a means of favoriting another player. This makes their structures way more likely to appear in your world. So if you notice one player in particular has gone out of their way to create useful tools and structures for others, you might want to keep them close by, therefore making your game easier. It's only fair that I look out for you. It's fair enough that you might want to focus on story quests for Death Stranding by picking up the order specific to Sam. But sometimes it's worth going out of your way and going the extra mile to deliver something else to an NPC you've already met. If you continue picking up extra orders to individuals after they've served their purpose in the main story, building up your connection with them further can often reward you with unique items like exoskeletons and weapon upgrades. Speaking of unlocking stuff from side quests, here's how you can meet talk show host Conan O'Brien, who isn't part of a main story quest, so is a little bit more difficult to hunt down. Sometime during Chapter 3, you'll get the option to take on a standard order involving a cosplayer. You'll want to do this, then journey to a weird little hidden cave halfway between South Knot City and the weather station. When you get there, you'll meet the wandering MC, partner of the cosplayer, played by Conan O'Brien. Uh, welcome to our summer home! By the falls. He really loves otters, and by the way of thanks, he'll give you the utterly adorable huh, otter hood, which makes it much easier to swim and recover yourself when you fall in deep water. Lovely. Anyway, these are just a few basic tips to help get you started in Death Stranding. Let us know how you're getting on with the game and how you're enjoying it. Do check out one of the other videos on screen now if you fancy it. There is a bunch of other great ones on our channel if you feel like subscribing. But thanks for watching this one. Bye!